Hey everyone, today I want to go over some new parts that I've now got available for the 2AR and the 2GR, particularly as it relates to the MR2 platform, though some of these parts, you know, like the clutches and studs and whatnot, will be applicable to other 2AR and 2GR builds. So let's get into it. First thing I want to talk about is the fact that I now have a full face ceramic with a Marcel spring. If you don't know what that means, and uh, just in general need some help picking out a clutch for your application, I went ahead and released a video on the same day as this video, right up here you can see it. I go ahead and talk about all the kinds of clutch things, so how to select a flywheel, how to select a pressure plate, how to select a clutch. Anyways, that's all a separate video. Go ahead and take a look at that after you've taken a look at this. So, first thing I want to talk about, let's talk about the 2GR. These guys, so I've obviously, I've mentioned these before, but they are now shipping. It's been a long delay and I sincerely apologize for that, but I now have these in stock. I do have reasonable amount of stock, so they should be available for quite some time. Um, and uh, these will make it so now in the first gen as well as the third gen MR2, they are much, much closer to the block and will help swaps. Now, as for other people doing 2GRs that are not in MR2, something to note is if you have an engine-driven hydraulic power steering pump, this will not fit. Uh, it'll hit right here. Um, the other thing to mention is this does not get in the way of the oil cooler, but it does get in the way of the oil cooler's coolant lines. So if you use this right here, you're gonna have some coolant lines that are in the way that you're gonna have to reroute. You'll still be able to use your oil cooler, but you'll have to reroute the cooling lines. Um, the actual oil lines themselves, those will be fine. The location of the oil cooler itself, that'll also be fine. Now, on to the, uh, yeah, let's talk about the 2AR next. So this mount, this is the mount that I developed for uh, the Project EV, the one where I'm making the drag car that I'm planning on taking the naturally aspirated record with. Um, this is now available, so this basically allows you to mount a 2AR right into a second gen Toyota MR2 using a rubber mount because I absolutely hate polyurethane. Rubber does a much better job at isolating that high frequency vibrations that are annoying in a car. Um, and frankly, rubber mounts aren't that much harder to make, so rubber mounts. Now, for people not going with the 2AR, we've got this part. This stuff doesn't look like a whole lot, but with this mount, so it's made to be mounted both ways. If you mount it the other way, and on this bracket, you can now mount the E-series transmission, so it replaces all of this assembly with all that steel in it. This actually saved just a hair over four pounds. It looks a lot better. Um, the only thing that it doesn't have is if you have the stuff that bolts up here. Honestly, it's been so long since I've had something up here. I think it's the factory air box that bolts up here. But if you have something bolted up to here, obviously that's going to need something resolved. But four pound weight savings, which is, I mean, that's really nice. And um, the stiffness of this rubber, this is real synthetic rubber. I guess that's how you should say it. Um, this is much more similar in stiffness to the TRD mounts. Uh, that were available back in the day for the MR2 platform. So I eventually do wanna make front and rear mounts available also, but those currently are still available. So I, one thing at a time, right? Now, this guy here, this guy gets really interesting. So in the EV project, again, the two and a half liter, I'm going to be using the narrow E-series transmission. So that's the one that, it's actually in a whole lot of cars but where you're generally gonna find them is the first gen Scion TC and um, the Camrys before 2009. And some of them have the wide one, some of them have the narrow one, it, it, it actually depends. But the Camry going pretty far back have them. Um, that transmission has a different rear mount. So you need this guy. This adapts it so that it bolts right to where the, uh, the transmission used to bolt. And conveniently, that transmission uses the same mount as the S54 in the front. So now, if you have a narrow E-series between these two mount and the mount, whether it's from the E153 or the S54 that you already have on your MR2, you can now mount a narrow E-series transmission. 
Other than the mounts, the other part you're going to need in order to use the uh, narrow E-series transmission in an MR2 is a shaft in order to convert it to forward shift because the MR2 needs the shift linkage on the front of the transmission, whereas just about every other E-series, except some of the European diesel ones for some reason, don't know why, but they shift in the rear. So um, the other thing is you can't even just snag the shaft out of an E-153 because when they modernize the synchros, they also modernize some of this stuff around here. And as a result, the E-153 shaft does not fit. But thankfully, uh, Alex Wilhelm came to the rescue there, and there's going to be a link also in the description for a shaft that he sells that you can use to convert your narrow E-series to be forward shift. That transmission has a lot of advantages to it. So the first thing to note is that it is almost 30 pounds lighter. Um, and it has axles that are available that are a lot cheaper. Um, you'll spend about $300 getting axles under there. Now, the axles are a little bit different if you're putting a 2GR or a 2AR. Um, I don't know what axle combination to use if you're using it with a 3S or even if a 3S GTE will even bolt up to this transmission. Sorry, that's just something I don't know. Um, but for the 2AR and the 2GR, definitely a good option. It's got much lighter internals, again, that 30 pound-ish weight savings, but that also means that it's got a lot less rotational inertia and it's got synchros that instead of being designed in the 1980s, they have been updated, and especially the Scion TC one, which is the, the absolutely latest one, um, it's got nicer synchros, and it's still an E-series, but it shifts just so much nicer, and the lighter internals means that you'll never get locked out, you know, like the uh, that E-153 sometimes at 7,000 or 8,000 RPM, you try to do your 1-2 shift, and it just, it just won't let you, because the synchros just can't bring everything up to speed, so it just locks you out of the gear. Um, this narrow E-series doesn't seem to have that problem, probably due to the lower rotational inertia as well as the more modern synchros. So that's super nice and that's why I'm using it in that car. It isn't as strong, but two things to remember there is not everybody needs over 700 wheel horsepower in their MR2. And second, uh, if you look at what the Scion TC folks have done, it looks like it breaks around 450 wheel horsepower um, which is well above what most MR2s run. And the part that breaks is a differential. Um, it's, I have to excuse it, it's in two pieces right now, but Quaif makes this differential. Um, it's a nice helical limited slip. They, uh, they put some magic in here. I, honestly, how helical limited slips work is, is, is purely just magic. But they have this differential, which fixes that issue. Um, in the EV build, we're actually going to be going one step further. We're going to be saving some weight and we're going to be using a spool. Now, this spool is made for a wide E-series transmission. Thankfully, the only difference is on this side. So there's going to be a video at some point where we're going to machine this down and adapt a wide E-series spool to a narrow E-series transmission. Uh, what's going to break next after we get past that 450 wheel horsepower level? I don't know, but I plan on figuring it out and I plan on keeping you guys informed. Um, it's probably going to take me about 350 horsepower to take the record and uh, I don't plan on stopping there. That's probably going to be the end of the road for the naturally aspirated build, but then the turbo build after that, after I take the naturally aspirated record, will go beyond that. Hopefully we'll start, well actually hopefully we don't start breaking things, but if we do start breaking things, we figure out what it is, we make it known, we see what upgrades are available, and we continue from there. Um, one last thing that's available. Oh, and by the way, part numbers and links to all this stuff, it, it's going to be all in the description. Even stuff like the, the Quaif parts, stuff that I don't sell, um, it's all going to be available. And finally, if we go back to the EV engine build, um, I want to use upgraded head studs in there. This is what I was using before, and several of you guys have asked me about the part numbers of these, and, and I never wanted to release them because the, they, they really aren't perfect. What happens is you have to thread it in, but you have to leave it standing off about two or three threads, and that means when you're tightening the nut up here, you have to be careful that the stud doesn't turn and just generally cause issues. So 
it was fine for me to use this, just not a good idea for everyone. Now, after some more looking into the, uh, the ARP parts, which I really wish they made dimensions available on this stuff. It's, it's kind of frustrating that they don't. But there is this stud, which has, if you look here, it has the extra length at the bottom to reach the bottom of the threads. And on top of that, it has this post at the bottom that isn't threaded because the, the threads in the bottom of the hole are not fully tapered. So this goes ahead and seats down at the bottom and doesn't mangle the bottom of the thread. So you can take these back out and put them back in. And every time you put them in and out, you're not damaging the threads. So these, not only do they fit the 2AR, they also fit the 2GR. So they are now for sale because they actually properly fit. And of course they come with the washers and nuts um, and the grease that you need to install these and torque them properly. Um, and finally, all of this stuff, I didn't put any fasteners with it, but as with all of my other things, I make sure that all of the fasteners included with them are all JIS flange. So it matches what's in the car right now and it, it'll have the right size head. So you know how the currently when you work on an MR2, you're working on eight millimeter, 10, 12 and 14 millimeter fasteners. Well, these are gonna match. We're not gonna have any stupid 13 millimeters or 11 millimeters or 15. That's so frustrating when you run across a car and you have to reach for a different tool because someone was too lazy to get the right hardware. So uh, that's it. Um, right here, you can see this is the link to the clutch stuff that I'm gonna be talking about here in the other video. So see you there in a second.